Thanks for clicking. The Toronto real estate market roared back in January, with buyers jumping in with the anticipation of rate cuts. This according to the Toronto Regional Real Estate Board and a multitude of news outlets. Oh, I tried to tell you. Indeed, the market roared back so much that, as we'll see, the benchmark, average, and median prices all fell in January. Yet, despite this apparent disconnect, a roaring back market while prices are dropping, says the TRREB, strong sales growth relative to listings suggests buyers experienced tighter market conditions compared to a year ago. Tighter compared to a year ago. Um. That doesn't mean what you think it means. Um. Indeed, as we'll see today, the data doesn't exactly match the narrative of an overly tight January market. So what I want to do today is go over Toronto's real estate data for the month of January, take a look at how tight that market is, especially compared to that of previous Januarys, and then discuss what to look for next. As we'll see today, the data doesn't exactly match the narrative in Toronto's real estate market, but that doesn't mean that it won't going into the spring market. We will continue to track the Toronto market on this channel. Click like and subscribe if you want to get those updates, but for now, let's get into this data. Under the data, first up, the benchmark price. The benchmark price, if you'll remember, that's the price of a home that represents the most popular set of features. The benchmark price in December was $1,067,200, and that dropped marginally down to $1,065,800. And while the benchmark was only down about $1,600, the average price was down much more significantly. The average price in December was $1,084,700, which fell all the way down to 1026703 in January. So the average price was down about 58 k from December to January and down about $11,000 since this point in time last year. This is as good as it gets. And the median price fell as well. The median price, if you remember, that's where half as many homes sell over that price and half as many sell under. The median price in December was $908,750 and that fell almost 19 k to 890000 So the median price is down almost 20000 from December and down about $10,000 from this point in time in January last year. With that said, the months of inventory measurement, the MOI, was down from December. The MOI measures if no more homes came to market, how long would it take for Toronto to completely run out of homes for sale? The MOI in December was 2.5 and was down to 2.4 in January. That's massive. But as we'll see later, and this is going to become important, it was still up from January of last year. And finally, the sales to list price ratio, the SLPR, which measures by how much over or under asking a home sells. So if a home is listed for 100K and sells for 98, the SLPR would be 98. Toronto's SLPR in December was 97 and is now sitting at 98. So on average, homes are selling for 2% less than their asking price. Or as reported by the Toronto Star, bidding wars are making a comeback. I'll always help you. Come on. So we have the benchmark price down about $1,500, the average price down about 58 k the median price down 19 k a little bit more inventory coming to the market, and homes selling for a bit less under asking than they were before. And with this data in mind, we have the usual suspects heralding the tightness of the market, with the Toronto Regional Real Estate Board noting that buyers are seeing a tighter market than they did a year ago. And at first glance, that does appear to be the case. With sales up 37% since this point in time last year, it looks as though buyers are in fact coming back to the table. This growth in sales led the TRREB to note explicitly, Stronger sales growth relative to listings suggests buyers experienced tighter market conditions compared to a year ago. Except we don't just want to look at the number of sales to gauge the Toronto market in January. Rather, we want to look at historical trends measuring both supply and demand and see how those trends relate to the current real estate market. And while the media, and you know who, is fawning over that 37% increase in the number of sales in Toronto in January, if we look closer at the data, we can see that there's a lot more supply available as well. 8.5% more than there was last year. So what you really want to do when you're looking at the tightness or not of the January market is look at the months of inventory measurement, the MOI, which, as mentioned earlier, was sitting at 2.4 in January, compared to 2.0 last year. So, as a result of the increase in supply relative to that of demand, Toronto actually has 0.4 more months of inventory than it did a year ago. That's not more tight, that's less tight. Further, if we look at the MOI measurements for the past 12 years, save COVID, we can see that that's the highest level of relative inventory, or the lowest level of tightness, that we've seen since 2019 
in 2015 before that. So as far as relative inventory goes, Toronto is actually less tight than it was a year ago and, save for COVID, is just about where it was in previous Januarys. It doesn't prove anything. So then, let's try another metric to measure the relative tightness for the month of January, the sales to new listing ratio, which looks at the amount of sales relative to the amount of new listings coming to the market. Well, that's fairly low for January as well, with the SNLR in January sitting at 46.9, compared to last year's 47.6. Again, that's less tight, not more tight. In fact, the sales to new listing ratio is at the lowest point it's been in Toronto in January for the past 12 years. But so what? So, of the two measures that we have to measure relative tightness, measuring supply and demand, both say that tightness in Toronto's market didn't get any worse. In fact, they got better, depending on where you stand. However, if the TREB and the media want to look at just the sales in the Toronto market in January, those weren't that spectacular either, with sales running just about where they were for the eight years pre-COVID for the month of January, back when Toronto had 200,000 less people. But while we're on the track of considering loan metrics, not comparing them to other metrics, getting just a brief snapshot that doesn't exactly tell us anything, Let's take a look at the number of properties coming to the Toronto market. Last month, Toronto saw the highest number of listings come to the market in the month of January for over the past 12 years. The number of new listings coming to the market is the highest level it's been for the past 12 years, higher than it was in January of 2022, when the benchmark price was $200,000 higher than it is right now. If buyers are flooding into the market in order to beat the rate cuts, then why aren't sellers waiting that out as well? You didn't tell them. Yes, you did. So, prices are down all across the board, yet the Toronto Regional Real Estate Board is heralding the tightness of the market. Yet, if we look at the data, if we look at the data comparing January of 2024 to January of 2023, inventory relative to demand is actually in better shape. Now, despite Toronto being less tight than it was a year ago, that doesn't mean that it won't grow more tight as the spring market starts. After all, headline after headline says that the market is already heating up, bidding wars are already becoming a thing, and the market is tightening. Better buy now. FOMO at work. With all of that said, we will continue to track the tightness or not of Toronto's real estate market throughout the year. Click like and subscribe if you want to get those updates, but for now, thanks so much for watching.